I really want, I want to be super clear. This, this is super important. We do not care how strong you are when you start. Listen, I have had many, many clients who could not squat a barbell at all on day one. They were squatting out of a chair or squatting off a box. That is okay. There is nothing to be embarrassed about. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to Barbell Logic. I am Scott Hambrick. That is Matt Reynolds. He's getting ready to have a sneezing fit. Go ahead. No, I'm okay. Okay. <clears throat> the sneezes have turned into tuberculosis. Mm. I'll be dead soon. Matt is now a lunger, but today we're going to do um, part six. Five. Part I five. That four times before we started yeah, the show. Yeah, but I don't... See, you, here's the mistake you, you made. Listen. You think I, I listen. I know. Uh, yeah. This is going to be part five. Yep. Oh, oh, getting okay. started series. Of our Getting Started series. This one's going to be about what you need to do on your very first session uh, to make sure uh, to get the most of it, to start off right. That's right. We've talked about the exercise selection, why we want to get strong. We've talked about the uh, equipment that we will use. That's and right. now it's time to actually talk about what to do. You've got, you've got everything you need. It's time to go to work. What do you do, Matt? Well... If you have the equipment that you are supposed to have, which you should, right, which is, as a review, a squat rack, a barbell, weights, and a bench. Mm. Those are the things you have to have, right? You're going to go in and you're going you're gonna to squat. And you can watch the squat video at Barbell Logic. Or, and um, you're going to put that bar on your back. So first question, I, I'll throw one back at you. What kind of warm-up do, does this person need to do? Having never squatted or deadlifted before, I guess they probably should get the foam roller out and. No, we're just going to no. squat with we're just going to squat with the empty bar. Uh, That's right. Dudes are going to start with a forty five pound bar. Most ladies are as well. Some very small ladies are going to maybe start with a training bar. Like I've got a hundred and eight pound lady who uh, it took her a couple of weeks to get to a forty five pound squat. She's very very small, but most people are going to just start with the forty five pound bar. Some very, very large people may have to start with the leg press or just body weight squats. Sure. But the vast majority of you listening to this will start with a with an empty bar squat. And and actually, if you wanted to start with a set of five of body weight squats and just practice your body weight squats for the first uh, first few sets, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, you can put your hands straight out in front of you to kind of counterbalance. And remember, we talked through the squats. You're going to bend over more than you think you should. You're going to stay balanced on your midfoot. You're going to reach back with your butt and push your knees out, and you're going to go until your hips get just below your knees, and then you're going to drive your hips back up towards the ceiling while staying bent over at the waist. And you're going to do that for a set of five, probably with no bar. If you can do that relatively easily, you can go right to that 45-pound bar. With that 45-pound bar on your back, put it in that low bar position we talk about, which is just below the spine of the scapula, so it's just below the top of your shoulder blades, it's going to be below your traps, right? It's not going to be anywhere near your neck. It's going to be across your shoulders. You're going to keep your wrist nice and straight. Take a deep breath, stand up, walk back, and you're going to do it for a set of five, that empty bar. Here's the key. Here's one of the things I've noticed with people is they want to go too fast in the beginning. And by so too fast, lower, you up and down too fast. They Yeah, they go, they drop into the hole. And... Really, for, for most of your lifting career, the, the descent, or what we often call the eccentric phase, should be very slow. So you should lower very slow into the squat. And I, I want that for newbies especially, because I want them to be able to feel what they're supposed to feel, primarily meaning that they feel balanced on the middle of their foot. If you go slow enough, you can feel if your weight shifts toward your toes to the ball of your foot. You could also theoretically feel if you're 100% on your heels, both are bad. We want to squat down, staying balanced over the middle of our foot. If we do that and that only right on the very first session, we're probably 90% of the way there. It's going to be it's pretty really good. important. Uh, if that's super easy for you, you can put 10, 15, 20 pounds on there and do another set of five. When it starts to 
all just barely almost starts to feel like it's some work. Like it's hard. Starting just starting to get hard. Just starting to get hard. Do two more sets of five, and that's your weight for the squat. Oh, I would disagree. So we got to talk through this. Mm. But it'll be good. We can just have this. Mm-hmm. We just have this disagreement on the. I think that if you are so, there's a there's a term we use. Let's go ahead and talk about it. It should be in this episode anyway. What is what does detrained mean? So you hear the word detrained or like an extremely detrained person. What what are we talking about? We are talking about someone who has exhibited an adaptation for doing nothing. <laughs> That's right. You are awesome at being sedentary. No, well, we, we, we talk about in the earlier episode, we talked a little bit, just a little bit about the stress recovery adaptation cycle where we, you have a specific stress, you recover, and then you display an adaptation for that stress. So most of the time we talk about that with a positive adaptation. We do a little, do some, something a little heavier than we used to. We get, we adapt and then we get stronger. Well, your body doesn't ever want to waste resources. So if you start sitting on the couch more than you did, you'll display an adaptation for needing fewer calories, having less muscle tissue, because your body doesn't want to build stuff that it doesn't need. That's right. So if you're not weight training, you detrain. And That's that right. could be an elderly lady who's gone through this sarcopenic process of m- losing muscle tissue. Or it could be Matt Reynolds, who used to be really strong, but got the flu and then had to travel and hasn't trained in seven weeks. Sure. Yeah, so it could be uh, – the thing I don't like about that word is detraining makes me think of somebody who was training, right. has stopped training, and therefore they have detrained. Mm-hmm. But in, in the world of strength and conditioning, we actually also refer to someone who is really never trained, is completely untrained. A, a absolute rank newbie beginner. If you are one of those people or you have done nothing in months in a mm-hmm. gym, then my suggestion would be rather than to do three working sets on the lifts that you would just do one working set on the lift on the very first workout. And on the second workout, you would do two working sets of five. And on mm-hmm. the third workout, you do three working sets. And that's because I, I do know that you're going to be a little bit sore, and I don't mind you being a little bit sore, but I don't want you to be so sore after that first workout that you have trouble sitting on the toilet and getting back up. <laughs> which happens. That you are, which happens all the time, or even so sore that a couple days later you can't train again. So I would argue that for most people who are listening that listen, listening to this, as a getting started series that you would do your body weight squats for a set of five or or so do the empty bar for a set of five, put a little weight on, do another set of five, put a little more weight on, do another set of five. And you'll just keep doing that. When I say a little bit of weight, again, if you're somebody who weighs 120 pounds, that little bit of weight might just be adding five pounds to the Mm -hmm. bar or 10 pounds to the bar. If you're a 200 plus pound man, you're probably going to add 20 pounds or so to the barbell. The barbell weighs 45 pounds, and you might go to 65, and then you might go to 85, and you can probably get around 95 or 100 or 105 if you're a if you're a you know normal size adult male, and that's about the weight that you'll probably be at. And by the way, don't be embarrassed if the weight no. that you're at is at 55 pounds. We don't care where you start at all. Don't be embarrassed if your starting weight is the is the fifteen pound training bar. If it's really really hard, and you do a set of five, you're like, boy, I don't think I could do much more than a set of five with that training bar. Start there. That's just fine. Nothing wrong with that. Here's where I differ, Matt Reynolds. Yes, I don't think. I actually, I don't think we do. If someone is completely untrained and has never done this before, I would have them do three sets of five. They're probably not going to get that sore because one, the weight's not going to be that heavy, and two having never done this before, they're unable to recruit enough muscle fibers to, to fuck themselves up anyway. Sure. I certainly don't think they can get hurt. They're definitely not going to get hurt. Now, somebody who has gotten decently strong who come and has laid out and is coming back to this, that yeah. person can get fired up and actually move some pretty decent <laughs> decent weight. Like they may come and back. They're going to be real sore. And they can get real sore. So here's an example. Sure. I had a surgery. I laid out. I laid out. General anesthetic is poison. Like it's literally poisonous. Has there's toxicity involved with the thing, and so I went under general anesthesia, laid out of uh, training for four weeks. When I came back, I thought I'm going to squat 225 for uh, a set of five. I did my last warm ups at 185. I did one. It was miserable, and I'm like, nope, that's it. 
So I was squatting in the in the uh, mid fours. The last session I squatted four hundred for five before I laid out. I came back. I squatted one eighty five for five, and my groin was sore AF. <laughs> then how long? How long was the layout? Four weeks, precisely four weeks. for twenty eight days. Yeah. So did exactly no work for twenty eight days. Came back and your squat was cut more than in half. Yeah, to forty percent of what you were doing. So the takeaway for you is start small and go slow, and you cannot fail. Sure. Because even I've said this many times on the show, even slow is very fast. If you add five pounds at a time, that's fifteen pounds a week. That's sixty pounds a month. That's seven hundred twenty right. pounds a year. Even slow is fast. So yeah, don't should be get great. in a hurry. Let's let's have a seven hundred twenty plus pound squat by the end of the year. Heck yeah, it's not going to happen, right? So, so you're going to do that with the squat. You're going to start with the squat, and we start with the squat because the squat is the most important exercise. It's the king of the lifts. It's the thing that's going to give us the best bang for our buck and the greatest return on our investment and all those other sort of trite sayings, but they are true. And you're going to you're going to go up somewhere between one working set of five up to three working sets of five. And you're going to do those working sets of five with a weight that you could probably do for eight or ten reps, but you're only going to do it for five. So if somebody is like, well, how hard is it? You know, how hard should it be? Well, you did it for five, but you could definitely do a few more reps. But it's enough that it starts to become difficult to hold your form and make sure your form is as good as you feel like you can make See, it. That's why you have to have them do one set of five is you have them go heavier. I would tell the person, if you've thought, is this too heavy? You're there. Right. If you yeah, even think it, that's fine. You're good. You know, yeah. and if that's the bar, that's fine. Yeah. Because remember, next week it's going to be 15 pounds heavier. The week after that will be 15 more, that's et right. cetera. You're doing great. So you're going to do your set of five or your three sets of five if you're a completely untrained person, never done this before, something like that. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. Do the work. Go slow. Stay balanced in your midfoot. Rack it. And then write it down in your paper training log. That's right. Date it. Write the day's date down. Write down squat. And then the weight you did. And then before you move on to your next lift, go ahead and schedule your next squat session. That's right. Write down. Which okay. Be five pounds heavier than the one it was today. Yep. That's exactly right. Or add one set. So if you if you elect to do one set for your squat today, yep. next session is going to be two sets. If you're the untrained person that went ahead and went for three sets, uh, go ahead and add a little weight and do your three sets of five next on your next session. Now, tomorrow afternoon to, like, let's say we our first session's Monday. Wednesday morning, you're going to be a little bit sore. Yep. If you overdid it, you're going to be a whole lot sore. The only thing that's going to make that soreness feel better is squatting again. That's right. That is not a joke. That's not a not trick a to get you to squat. You will start. You will do that first. The first warm up probably won't make it feel better. No, it's by, gonna actually it's gonna hurt. Yeah, but it's not injured. No, it's sore. But by the time you finish your first working set, you probably actually won't be sore anymore. Right, or certainly far less sore. So what I like to do on that first session is because the bar height is already set for my squat. When I'm done with my squats, I go right to my presses, my overhead press, because usually the rack is going to be set in the same spot for your press. Yep. And so then you can take that same bar or again, for some of you, some, some of you ladies, you'll have to use a 15 pound bar or a, or, or a female training bar, which is 33 pounds. It's 15 kilos. And you're going to take the weight. Um, you're going to take the bar out of the rack with close grip, uh, elbows forward, wrist straight, and you're going to press the bar overhead. And you're going to do so by trying to keep the bar as close to your nose as you possibly can. When you get to the top, you're going to shrug up as hard as you can. You're going to try to get as tall as you can and sort of try to touch the ceiling with the bar. You probably won't be able to touch the ceiling with the bar. And then you'll bring the bar right back down the same way it went up with elbows forward and wrists straight and getting the bar as close to your nose as you possibly can. You'll do a set of five with the empty bar and you'll do the exact same process over again with the press that you did with the squat. You'll add a little weight. For some of you, jumping five pounds per press set will be too much for some of, mm -hmm. some of you ladies that are using the 15 pound bar the 33 pound bar you're only going to be able to put on smaller plates 1.25 pound plates and that would be a two pound or be, that would, sorry that would be a two and a half pound jump most of you guys can add five pounds or ten pounds and do knock out a few more sets do it again set a five go up a little bit of weight set a five go up a little bit of weight set a five 
And the exact same thing. When you think like, okay, this is getting a little bit tough, you're done. Now for press, I do often like doing more than one set of five because I think people need to practice. I think because the press uses the least amount of muscle mass of the four major lifts of the squat, the press, the bench press, and the deadlift, then the opportunity to get sore from the press, it just it's just not there. You, you rarely see people do a press, do three sets of five on press, and two days later, like, oh, my shoulders hurt so bad. It happens. If it did, you went too heavy and you went yep. too hard on that first session. But if you're pretty conservative, you can do your three sets of five on the press and uh, and be done. And then you do the exact same thing that Scott talked about before. You write it down in your log book. You write press. You write the weight that you did. You do your sets and reps. I did three sets of five or two sets of five or whatever you do. So uh, anything else about the press that you want to say? Yeah, uh, it is not uncommon for ladies to not be able to press the 45-pound bar. So we talked about ladies using a lighter bar for the squat. That's not That doesn't happen very often actually, right. but just know that you may need it. But on the press, it happens a lot. There are a yeah, lot of very ladies common. that will not be able to press the just the, the, the seven foot long regular Olympic standard barbell. So look for a training bar. You'll see a ladies bar that it's skinnier. Sometimes they're shorter. There's a, there's a, um, a, a 15 kilo one that weighs, what is that? 33 pounds, Matt? Yep, 33 uh, pounds. Correct. Uh, and then in some places you'll find it aluminum one. That's 15 pounds. A what? Aluminium. A what? <laughs> An aluminum. An aluminum bar. bar. It weighs 15 pounds. Uh, it, so start with that ladies bar and add a little weight and add a little weight. And um, again, uh, don't be, ladies, don't be macho about it. Don't worry about it. You know, yep. if you press, it's not uncommon. I, I bet the average ladies press in one of my intro sessions is probably 25 pounds. I was going to say 30 for me. Yep. So we're in the same wheelhouse. I probably don't push them quite as hard as you do, but sure. Well, and so what Scott's saying is, is if you are a female and you start with the, and you get the 45 pound bar for a set of five, you're a bad you're ahead machine. Of the curve. You're ahead of the curve, right? Uh, what's the average lady's starting squat? Would you say? Uh, 55, 65. I was going to say 65. Yeah. Somewhere in there for, uh, uh, for a completely untrained individual. Yep. And again, if the, if you're above or below that, it doesn't. That's nothing to necessarily celebrate or be embarrassed about. It's just we're telling how, you how a about ballpark. This? Try not to be above it because it's just going to make you sore. Even sure. if you can do it, just don't worry about it. You'll get there soon enough anyway because we're yeah. going to add weight. Um, do we do we dare give an average men's starting number? It, men are harder because um, the variance in in body size for men. You, you yeah. get men that are starting this and they weigh. 135 and you have guys are doing this and they're starting and they weigh 265 let's say for a the five difference ten, is just tremendous let's say for a 510 175 pound guy squat beginning squat 105 i was gonna say the same yeah, yeah. uh press is going to be i'm going to say your mine first 65 okay. yeah i was going to say the same 65 somewhere in there yeah, so you know, try not to be above that. The, and those are the, and believe, listen, those are averages. So if oh. you're if you're two standard deviations away from that, it's okay. I, I really want, I want to be super clear. This this is super important. We do not care how strong you are when you start. I used to have to tell people this all the time when I owned the gym. I owned a gym, and the name of the gym was Strong. So people thought what they should do is they should get themselves a gym membership to another gym for six months. Until they got decently yeah, strong and then joined strong, right? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We couldn't care less where you are when you start. Listen, I have had many, many clients who could not squat a barbell at all on yep. day one. Yep. Their squats were, they were squatting out of a chair or squatting off a box. Yep. And sometimes I have to hold their hands when they do it. That is okay. There is nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody else your age... Everybody else, your demographic is doing nothing. And what you're doing on day one is you're learning how to stand up out of a chair properly. And that is just fine. So if you, if you can't even put a bar on your back, you're starting somewhere. And then we sometimes will progress that. If you can't squat with a bar on your back, we get to the point where you can squat from a chair or from a box for sets of five. And then we do what's called a goblet squat and have you hold a little weight in your hand, a little kettlebell in your hand or a medicine ball in your hand and squat until you get heavy enough where we can put a bar on your back. 
Or like Scott said, if you go to a bigger gym and you've got access to a leg press, you can do a leg press instead of that method. Yep. And you can get your legs stronger until you can squat. Now, we only leg press until we're strong enough to squat with the empty bar. And as soon as we're strong enough to squat with the empty bar, we throw the leg press in the trash and we start squatting. Yeah. And for most leg press machines, that means you leg press twice your body weight for sets of five. Yeah. And then you can probably do your body weight without it. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. So don't, uh, don't try to beat those numbers, guys. Don't try to beat them. Just do them. Get in there. Get get out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to deadlift. Um, that's where we pull the bar off the floor. Right. And we want you to be able to pull it off of standard size plates, which are 17 and a half inches tall. Right. The 17 and a half inch tall plate means that the bar is about eight inches off the ground. About and that's nine, the, that's the half, right, yeah. that's the right length or right distance off the ground. Right. That's where we want, that's where we want it to be. And if you're a lady and the deadlift's going to be lighter than 135 pounds, you're going to have to sit it, set the bar on something to get the height correct. That when, and that's if you train at a gym that doesn't have bumper rubber plates. Right. And they only have iron plates. So the 45s have a bigger diameter to them for iron plates than the 25s, which has a bigger diameter than the 10s, which has a bigger diameter than the 5s. But if you go to a gym, actually, it's a pretty good, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about some of these strange pieces of equipment. If you go to a gym that has a women's training bar, a yeah. 15 kilo or 33 pound bar, and has a, a 15 pound uh, aluminum bar or something in that ballpark of aluminum bar, and has bumper plates, and so that the 45-pound plates, the 25-pound plates, and the 10-pound plates are all the same diameter, that's probably a good that's sign a good that you're training at a good gym. Yep. Most of you who go to a gym that's that's got the word fitness any, in it, anything that has the word fitness in it, um, will not have those. And so if you're going to start with the bar or with 10-pound uh, plates on the bar, you m- most women can start deadlifting at 65 pounds, Certainly, you're going to have to put those 10 pound plates on the bar and you're going to have to put that on like aerobic steps or you're going to have to stack some rubber mats up. Or we you're need have to, to make up some spoof t-shirts that say anything fitness on them. Anything fitness. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, that'd be a good idea. Or if the rack is such, so if you've got that squat rack, that squat cage we were talking about that has the holes that go all the way down to the bottom of the rack, you can put the bar on the safety pins down low in the bottom of the rack, so it's down about your mid-shin level, uh, about nine inches off the floor. So you've got several options there to get the bar to the right height. Now, Scott, why do we need the bar at the right height? So that all the angles are correct. If it's too darn low, your knee, knee angle and your hip angle are be glo- closed up too much. You might have to have your hip above your shoulder. Everything's wrong. Everything's wrong. Everything's wrong. So we want to train it from the cor- over the correct range of motion with the, f- the the correct starting position. I'm fitting to blow your mind, Matt Reynolds. Are you sitting down? Oh, I'm excited. The 45 plate is 17 and a half inches around, and it puts the bar in the exact right spot. On a decent set of iron plates, the 35 is one plate thickness too short to pull the deadlift from the correct height. So if you put a 35 on there, you could put the 35, you can lay a 45 pound plate on the bar on the floor and put, are you the, serious? Are the, you sure about this? This on, is amazing. On, de- on decent plates. Yeah. I mean, there's some right. stuff that's not, but if you're most cast iron plates are built this way, 25 is the same way. You put two 45, 45 on the ground. And then a 20, the 25 is on the bar. Three 45 is on the ground. That's right. Beautiful. That's that's genius. Yeah, I just learned something. So uh, you can you can you know you can figure out how high that needs to be, and then put that b- barbell with loaded with the smaller plates on top of the correct number of forty five stacked on the ground, and boom, you'll be right. So you're gonna start your warm ups. I would start ladies at like sixty five to seventy five pounds, and I do that like because that. I have ten pound bumper yep. plates that are the right diameter. Yep. And so we can't just pick the button. Let me make sure that everybody understands. You can't just put the bar on the floor with no weights and pick it up. Your butt because, ends up being higher than your head. In your- yeah, you can't get set up correctly. You can't get your back. We, 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 we call it putting your back in extension. And all that really means is making your back flat. right? So everybody knows you're not supposed to lift with a cat back. right? Or like the, the what, what a dog looks like when he's, when he's performing Humped a bowel up movement. like a dog. 
Yeah, we don't. You don't want to do that. So you want a nice flat back, and that's called an extended back. And you, very very low percentage of the population could pick an empty barbell up off of the floor, sitting on the floor, with their back flat. Yeah. They would be rounded to get down there, and so that's that's why we have to put. And we're trying to train the motor pattern, right? So your body, just like any sport, if I were trying to learn how to throw a baseball, pract I would practice throwing a standard size baseball, a standard weight, standard size baseball, because I'm trying to set the motor pattern. Your body, your neurological system will learn this motor pattern and create a highway so that every time you do it, it becomes a little easier to do it correctly. And if we're picking up this barbell from the wrong height, too too high, too low, whatever, then we're not setting the motor pattern the way we need to. So we got to get the bar to the right height. So that's so Scott's idea of if you can use 45s, you can put it on the floor. If you've got to use iron 35s, you'll put those on a on a 45 pound plate. 25s, you'll put it on two 45 pound plates. 10s, you'll put it on three 45 pound plates. Yep, and that gets the bar to the right height. And do one set of five if that's easy peasy. You can add 20 pounds. Do another set of five, and once you get to a weight that's not just a slam dunk easy deadlift for you to do. Um, you're going you're gonna to complete that one set of five and stop and write it down in your book. We've already said that we would start ladies probably at something like 65 pounds. Yep. Um, guys, I will start them at 95 to 115, depending on Same. how big of a gentleman it is. Um, the average ladies deadlift is going to stop between 95 and 105, I would say, Matt. Dude, that might that might even be high, but yeah. Think so? That, that's probably slightly aggressive. I'd say 95 is... I mean, it depends on the age, you know, um, somewhere between it's going to be somewhere probably between 75 and 95 okay. for for females who are over 50 and for okay. females who are under 50 who are in the 30s or 40s. It's probably going to be somewhere between 95 and 115. That's okay. probably age. Age probably makes a significant difference there. I find v there are very few guys I will let pull heavier than 185 for their first session. I was going to say it too. 185 is about the top because even though they're sometimes strong they can to do, do it, more. Yeah. yeah, but they can't tend to hold their form very well. And and the deadlift is all about the the back is a force transmitter, so it transmits force into the bar. So the back has got to be totally rigid, and most people don't know how to make their back rigid. And so you've got to make your back completely totally flat. You've got to make the weight heavy in your hands, and then you have to be able to drag the bar up your legs without letting your back get loose. And that's Perfect very form. difficult for people who've never done that before. And so, again, we've got videos on that on YouTube. You can check that out. And so um, you've got to be able to pull that bar in a way that your back stays totally rigid so that it can transmit the force of all the muscles that are moving, which is like your glutes and your hamstrings and your quads. Those are the, the prime movers of the deadlift. But if you think about it, the deadlift is hanging from your hands, which are hanging from your shoulders. And so the area between your hips and your shoulders must be rigid. And that's your back. And so you hold your back really, really tight, really, really rigid. Your back doesn't round at all. You never look like a cat back or like a dog taking a poop in the woods or anything like that. And you'll be just fine. Yeah. Write that down in your book. We, remember, that's just one set of five. We use a lot more muscle mass. You've already squatted. So one set of five on the deadlift is sufficient. And that's what you're going to You're going to do one set of five for your deadlifts for a very one long working, time before you do anything. One working set of five. That's one right. working set, yep. That's right. So you'll do a few warm-ups. Some people will do more than others. But you'll end with just one top set of five, and you'll stop there at the deadlift. And then you do what? Uh, I put all my shit in my gym bag and leave. Oh, I like doing that. It de so it depends. Uh, that's a good, that's a good, so you have another option. So if you've, if you've done my option of just one top set for all of the lifts, I will often go ahead and do the bench press yep. as well. Um, if you've done three sets of five on the squat, three sets of five on the press and one set of five on the deadlift, you should do exactly as Scott says, and you should put your, all your stuff away and you should always put your stuff away in the gym. Right, take all your weights, put them back, leave the gym cleaner than you found it, uh, whether it's your home gym or whether it's a public gym, and you go home. And when you come back next time, two days later, you're going to do the squat again, but you're going to go up five pounds, probably five pounds. Yep. And rather than press, you're going to do the bench press. And it's the same system that we've just described on all the other lifts. You're going to put the bench inside the rack. You're going to put the safety, the safety um, bars just below your the height of your chest so your chest will make a 
kind of an arch, right? So you're going to try to get your your butt and your shoulders as close together as you can while laying on that bench press. And so that's a that's an arched back. It's the opposite of a cat back, the opposite. Mm -hmm. And so sort of your sternum, so the bottom of your sternum for most of you will, will be the highest point on that arch. You'll set the pins in the rack, the safety pins, just below that point. So if something bad happens, you can just relax that arch and the bar will sit on the pins. And, and, and you remember Hambrick's rule for how much arch in the back, right? How much arch? Well, you want the arch under the back in the back to be high enough that a mouse could run across the bench under your back, but the cat chasing it can't. I like that. That's Hamburg's Mouse rule. can get under your back, the cat the cats can't. <laughs> Right. That's that's actually probably not a bad not a bad idea. And you you're gonna have to put the J hooks in a position where your elbows are slightly bent when they grab the bar out of the J hooks in the rack. And the important thing on a bench press is that you extend your elbows, you straighten your elbows while the bar is over the J hooks. You not don't over extend, your face. Not over your face, right? So we never have bent elbows in a bench press, either locking it out or bringing it down while the bar is over our face. So we lock it out while it's over the J-hooks, then we move it horizontally and we balance it over our shoulder joint. We bring that empty bar down, and again, I, I'd say 50, about 50-50 on my women can use a 45-pound bar on a bench press. A lot of my, about 50% of my women need to start with a with a training 33-pound bar. A 15-pound no. bar is, for most ladies, a little light to start with. I almost, uh, but always, it's fine. Put, I almost always put 10s on my 15-pound bar 15 to start pound bar, the ladies. So there you go. Which is basically the same thing as a 33-pound bar. Yep. And uh, and you'll you'll bring the bar down and you'll touch it somewhere around the peak of your chest, like the high point of your chest or the bottom of your sternum. Now, the hard thing to talk about on the bench press is because the way people are put together, it's a word we call anthropometry. It's just a fancy word that means the way you're put together. They're, people are different, right? So we've seen people that have long sternums and short sternums and big rib cages and small rib cages and great big boobs and little bitty flat chests. And so where the peak of your chest is, is going to depend on the person. So we can't say to touch the peak of your chest or touch the, touch the bottom of your sternum, but it's going to be somewhere in that ballpark. And it's going to be what's got about two inches or so below your shoulder joint ish. It's going to depend too. It's going right? to depend at least that at least two inches, maybe three, three, four inches below your shoulder joint. You're going to bring the bar down nice and slow. Your upper arms are going to be at about a 45 degree angle from your torso. Again, that depends on the length of your arms. But you're going to bring the bar down nice and slow. You're going to touch the peak of your chest. I like to think about touching my shirt, but not touching my chest itself because I don't want to bounce the bar no bouncing. Off, of, off of my body. So I want to very lightly touch my chest and then return the bar back to a point locked out in balance over the shoulder joint. Now, everybody's seen a bench press, so you guys know what I'm talking about. There's a few people listening that have, don't know what a bench press is at all, but it is important that we perform it in a way that is safe. Um, and just like you said in the in the squat, most people lower the bar too fast. Yep. Uh, lowering the bar for a one, two, three yep. is where I want my people. Uh, so slowly lower that bar down. You're going to um, – going to get to add a little weight, add a little weight to the point that you, um, you think, yeah, this is, I wonder if this is heavy enough when you say that, yep, it's heavy yep, enough. Heavy enough. And, uh, do two more sets of five, or if you're in Matt's model and you're doing this on your first day, it's one set of five racket. And now you're ready to go home. Um, we already talked about ladies are going to start at probably 30, 35 pounds. Very few of them, I think are going to get more than 60 pounds, 65 yeah, pounds be, off their chest. High. For sure. Very few are going to beat that. Men are going to start with the 45-pound bar, of course. I have very few that I have bench pressed more than 95. Oh, I, I think I'd be more aggressive there, but it just it's, it, it just depends. People are all over the place. Again, a 265-pound man, mm -hmm. he, he's actually built up a tremendous amount of strength being 265 pounds, even if he's very detrained. Even if he's 265, yeah. 275 pounds and fat. He is. I don't mean that in a negative sort of way. I just mean like he's you're morbidly he's obese. He's moving weight around, right? So, but you're moving a lot of weight around, so you're strong. So, so sometimes my guys get up to 135 or so on their first on their first day on bench press. More often than not, it's more around 115 ish, 
And still, very often, it's in the ballpark of 95, and 95 is fine. By the way, 75 is fine if you're a guy. If you're a guy, and on day one, all you can do is 65 or 75 pounds, nothing wrong with it at all. Because, again, as Scott said, you're going to blink. Um, because we alternate the bench press and the press, you're only going to add 7.5 pounds on average to those lifts per week. But that's still 30 pounds a month, which is still a pretty big increase per month. So if you always want to err on your first session on starting too conservative. And so hey, let me tell you why, Scott, I have started to lean towards that doing all four lifts on your first session and just mm -hmm. doing one main working set. And and that's because we found if if you if you really want to uh, get excellent feedback on this first workout, we we have that experience system set up at, at Barbell Logic. So you can email experience at barbell-logic.com and we'll put you into our software for free. There's no commitment at all. You don't have to put a credit card on file, nothing like that. And then you will perform all four of those lifts and get feedback on all four of those lifts with one of our coaches. And um, and, and so it's pretty, it's pretty substantial. And if you're going to do all four lifts that day, then doing three sets of five of most of the lifts will often be That's too, too much, much and you're going to be really tired by the time you get to the fourth lift. So I'll often just have our clients. So if you utilize the experience at barbell-logic.com email, you email us and say, hey, I'd love to do a, a test workout. I'd like to do my first workout under the eyes of a, of a coach and get some feedback on that. Then you can do that. And so I would do that. If you're all by yourself, you don't have a coach, uh, you're just going to do it in your garage or in your gym. Um, then I would probably err and do. Uh, I would rather have do it on Scott's Scott's method, which is the three mm. sets of five on squat, three sets of five on press, one set of five on deadlift. Go home, come back a couple days later, do it again. Go up five pounds on the squat and deadlift, and instead of doing the press, I would do the bench press. Last piece of advice today is um, a number of you are going to are going to start doing this. You're going to come in your first day. Um, you're going to be a little anxious because you're going to go into that room with the rubber floor and all the weird dudes in it and the free and the free weights. Uh, that's your room to march your ass in there and get after it. Uh, there are going to be some people that want to uh, provide you with um, advice. Don't take it. Yeah, don't take it. Don't take it. There aren't very many people that, that do this correctly. Uh, there are people in that room that are going to be stronger than you this week. There won't be many in that room that are stronger than you in 12 weeks. So yep. do it the way you that you know is right and uh, thank them for their advice and then keep on doing what you do. And uh, don't, let them t don't let them tell you otherwise. And you're going to, like we said, you're going to add weight and you can't add weight forever. You can't run the novice linear progression forever. You can't run it for a year, uh, but you can run it for a number of weeks, adding 15 pounds to your squat. And uh, uh, you're going to double and triple a, a, a lot of these numbers uh, in a very short amount of time. And then, then things will have to change. Then you'll yep. probably need a little more help with programming. And we'll talk about that next week. Actually, I think that's our, we'll probably on the next episode of the Getting Started series, we'll talk about why linear progression is so amazing. Yep. And it is linear progression, just adding a little bit of weight, every single workout, every single time uh, is really, if that works and it does, why would you do anything else? And so we'll, we'll really flesh that out next week in next week's episode. But between now and then you have homework. You have homework and uh, be confident. Don't worry about perfection go in there do your best don't judge it put your stuff away and leave yep that's right because doing is the most important thing first session is going to take what 40 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes takes longer than that you're lollygagging if it takes shorter than that you're probably going a little fast uh about 40 minutes for everybody action our listeners are men and women of action that's right so go take action, go do the stuff, and you'll be glad you did. There's another Barbell Logic podcast. If you have any questions about this, send them to questions at barbell-logic.com. If you want help with your first session, email email experience at barbell-logic, and one of our coaches will uh, will help you with your first session. We'll do a little Skype conversation with you to answer for any free. questions you have. Yeah, it's for free. No obligation. Like it's really free. You know how like when they say like there's nothing is free? Right. This is actually kind of free, right? Is there Well, you'd free. like for them to sign up. Let's not bullshit. 
You no, no, like of course I'd like up. for you to sign up. But even if you sign up, that's this experience session is free. Yeah, and you're not going to get hounded if you don't sign up. So no, we don't do big salesy stuff. We don't do that at all. We want you to leave with a great taste in your mouth, whether you sign up or not. Whether you that's what I always say. Leave with a great taste in your that's mouth. That's what I always say. That's always that's been like your that's been your your mo. For that's your right. Entire life. So you're going to email experience at barbell-logic.com. One of our coaches is going to contact you. You guys will do a little Skype consultation for free, set you up in our software, and then walk you through your first session and uh, give you video, video feedback on your form, give you marching orders for your subsequent sessions, and uh, set you on the path to getting much stronger very, very quick, quickly. Also, send this to a friend. That's mighty important. Send this to a friend who needs to get stronger. And also, if you have time, please go to iTunes and give us a five-star review. Those are a big help to us, and they kind of drive us up in the search results because their search results are strange. Yeah, a little bit satanic. But what do you mean, <laughs> right? We're aiming for 1,000. We've passed 800, and now we've set our eyes on 1,000 reviews. Those apples have gotten us in trouble before. They have? Yeah. You know, original know sin and all that stuff. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? I get it. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Why'd they name it Apple? A little, little play on words. Why'd they name it Apple? Well, I still like it. That's what he said. I know. That's <laughs> all right. All Thanks right. for listening. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. See you next week. Stop. There you go.